I'd like to begin by recognizing every single one of you individually and collectively. This is an unstoppable moment, but I'd like also to give a special shout out to the President of Poland who has made time to be with us here today. Thank you. A year ago, in a conversation with Strive Masiwa, we were talking about how to make the best of an opportunity of the largest global gathering annually here in New York, um, and how to make sure that Africa's voice was heard speaking to its narrative, its pathway, its aspirations, and we talk about Africa rising and the world will rise, the world will fly. And in that moment, Gabby was born. It was born to bring our voices together from different, different constituencies, not just our governments, because our governments are there for, 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 for the day, um, but business, uh, the private sector, such an important part of the heartbeat of Africa, and in particular, young people, young women. And last year showed us how we could do that in such a short time. We brought ourselves together, and the demand was to do it again this year. And for that, we know that in the UN, if we're going to talk about Africa, the leadership on the continent comes from our institution, the African Union. And the African Union Commission is the drumbeat of what we do together in our partnership with them at the UN. And work that is across our 54 countries. And every day we rise to the conflicts, we rise to the realities that are not so good for that over a billion people on the continent that we have to serve. But we also rise to knowing the potentials and we fight every day to close that gap between the reality and the aspirations of every African child, woman, man. And so the unstoppable Africa will be unstoppable because the leadership in Africa is taking on the helm. We're talking about all the things that are not so good, but we're also talking much more together about the things that can happen. That leadership in the African Union Commission is our chair of the African Union Commission, His Excellency Musa Mohamed Faki. And without his leadership, his wisdom, his courage every day to get up and to try to herd 54 heads of state and government, I can tell you that's not mean feat, no mean feat at all, but to bring us together here for the second year and really speak to the continent's um, aspirations, the leadership, what we expect from everyone here um, is, is really my deep honor and pleasure. I hope that the next two days will create more connections amongst us, will give more value to the things that we don't often hear about, but we will hear about, to the partnerships that we want that must be genuine and must be there for the long haul. There are no quick fixes for anyone, and certainly not for the continent of Africa. But we've already charted that way, Agenda 2063, and I'll tell you, we have a 10-year plan which aligns itself with Agenda 2030. And this is a week that we bring the world together to say, how are we doing on the SDGs? We're not doing very well. But because of Africa, we will close that gap and we will make and deliver the promises of both Agenda 2030 and Agenda 2063. So on that note, it is my pleasure to introduce our leader from the African Union Commission, but my brother, Chairman Musa Mohamed Faki. Your Excellency Amina Mohammed, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellency President of the Republic of Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Allow me first of all to thank my dear friend and sister Amina Mohammed and with her for convening this important event with the African Union. I also sympathize with you, you and Antonio, at this busy time of the United Nations General Assembly when you are faced with a never-ending stream of events and meetings. I wholeheartedly endorse the design of this forum, which seeks to formulate the most relevant and substantial potential proposals to accelerate the process of economic transformation in Africa. One fundamental challenge at the center of all of our development concern today 
is the need of reform of the global system, particularly as it relates to development financing. There is no question of the urgency for global reform and the needed mobilization of financial resources. Whether we're talking about financing peace, financing infrastructure, financing the means to resist climate change, financing the energy transition, financing the fight against poverty to employ young people and women, or financing our education and health systems, the need remains the same. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, while echoing the ardent aspirations of the African people, our Continental Development Agenda 2063 also opened up a wide conceptual corridor inviting African desires to surpass themselves and aspire to an even better future. The Global Africa Business Initiative is designed to accelerate the promotion of business, trade, and investment on the continent. This objective also constitutes the real dynamic level capable to create the expected and shared prosperity. In doing so, this forum directly and indirectly assigns a crucial role to the private sector. Although the role of the private sector is universally recognized, it is still hampered in some aspects by a series of handicaps that limit its capacity to create and innovate. The African private sector would benefit both for itself and for Africa if it were bolder in accepting and taking risks to create wealth and achieve prosperity, we need to have a little bit more of a spirit of adventure and the acceptance of the demands of such a spirit. All the conquerors of the new worlds would have achieved nothing if they had confined themselves to positions of certainty of certain outcomes. Today, the unlimited horizons opened up by digitization and artificial intelligence leave no room for the lazy, the hesitant, nor supporters of sterile, ossified immobility. In this respect, I would like to emphasize one point in our economic vision, that of changing the perception of our young people in general and our young entrepreneurs, in particular with regard to redefining the image of working the land. Africa's agricultural potential is well known. The surface area of our Arab land and its hydraulic potential mean that the continent can be in a position to stop importing cereals of all kinds and to help feed a large part of the world population. To achieve this, I believe, they are reintroducing young people to the largely untapped potential of the African agricultural sector should be a key strategic objective. I hope that this forum and, that, and after it, our education systems and the guidance of our leaders like yourselves will succeed in bringing about a new awareness. Clearly, the vast market that is Africa is not yet producing the expected results for a number of reasons, including the high level of indebtedness of capital flight and the persistence of illicit financial flows. It is therefore my sincere hope that this Global Africa Business Initiative Forum will become a strong and effective part of the continent's efforts to defeat such challenges and open up 
horizons to a new era of reform on a global scale. But Africa cannot win alone, not in a world as interconnected as ours. She will certainly win more by first relying on her own strengths, but never against others, never without others. Unstoppable Africa is vital for a child global future. Thank you for your kind attention.